Hi y'all, let's talk a little bit about the Philando Castile shooting and the acquittal of the police officer who shot and killed him and whether or not I think it was a justifiable homicide. Was the shoot good? And is there much or anything to the talking points in the media about X many cops prosecuted, zero convictions, and oh, well, at least it's commendable that now prosecutors are brave enough to bring prosecutions in these cases, even though juries aren't getting with the program and going along with the prosecution's wish to see these various police officers uh, in incarcerated for the various shootings that happen. So you have to think about what it is that a jury is doing, what it is a juror does, in contradistinction to what it is that a journalist does, or a lawyer they have on to talk about this, or an ex-cop they have on the program to talk about this or doing. Jurors, unlike any of these other people, swear out a solemn vow to do a particular thing. They don't get to sit there and, well, my best guess is this, my hunch is the other, or oh, racial that, or... No, that, that is not their function. They are to evaluate the evidence admitted at trial and uh, draw reasonable inferences from it. And the defendant, much to the chagrin of the media apparently, is entitled to all of the reasonable doubt that a jury uh, might have. The prosecution has a high burden to meet. Talking heads on various news programs have no burden to meet. They can convict you in the public opinion polls uh, on no evidence at all, or on scanty evidence, or on manufactured evidence. As long as they say it's my opinion, you know, there you have it. So jurors are made, you know, jurors are ordinary people uh, who go into court and they swear out a solemn oath, a solemn vow. And the ordinary person, the ordinary man, the ordinary woman, when they swear out a solemn uh, vow, uh, you know, asserting that they will, on their honor, you know, follow the law and do a particular thing, evaluate the evidence that is admitted at trial, not uh, take into account what might appear in the newspaper or on the TV, they typically try to do that thing. They try to do a really good job of getting it right. But they are also ordinary citizens who depend upon the police services to quell uh, crime in their areas. And they're cognizant of that fact and the fact that uh, the criminal defendant in all criminal prosecution, uh, prosecutions is entitled absolutely to the benefit of their doubt. And so it's unsurprising that in many of these cases the officer will get the benefit of the doubt that he is legally entitled to. Now. I've watched the video, I've watched it a couple of times, I've even put down some little timers on it, and I think this shoot is good. By good, I don't mean like the best thing ever to have happened in the history of the universe good. I mean that it is a justifiable homicide based on what it is that I've seen and the evidence uh, that was uh, found, you know, the evidence that was reported having been found at the conclusion of the investigation. I've even read the retired police chief guy who has a JD who did his evaluation saying that no reasonable police officer would have done what this officer did. Uh, that's just not so. There are many reasonable police officers who would do uh, in the same or similar circumstances what this officer did in this particular circumstance based on the evidence that I've seen or the evidence that's reported. I didn't actually see any of the evidence. All I have are the reports. For all I know, everybody's made it up. Could be true. Doubt it, but it could be true. And what the officer knew at the time, uh, because the guy, uh, Philando Castile, said, I have, you know, I have a firearm, I have a gun, whatever it was he said, uh, the officer also knew that the guy was uh, likely on drugs, something the media doesn't like to talk about. The fact that it, in the aftermath of it, the officer pointed out that when he approached the car, he smelled um, marijuana that had recently been smoked. Well... Wouldn't you know it, marijuana was found in the car, and THC, a high level of it, was found in Philando Castile's uh, body. Now, some people have pointed out to me, why would Philando Castile say, I have a gun, and then reach for it? I mean, that would be crazy. Well, all you are doing by saying something like that would be crazy is pointing up the fact, the defining feature of people who are on drugs. They are not the most rational of actors. That is... Uh, why people do drugs. It's to alter their mental state. It should not be surprising that a person who has gone out of his way to alter his mental state will ex uh, exhibit behaviors that are not fully rational. I mean, this is no great mystery. Well, why would a person get drunk and drive? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. You've, that's exactly the problem. They're not, they're not firing in all cylinders. You know, if you thought more carefully about this, you probably wouldn't do it. Anyway, so uh, there's a video. I'll link to it below. And at 1.35, right after Philando Castile says that he has a firearm, the officer says, uh, don't reach for it. 
uh, he says this in less than a second. At 136 to 137, he says again, don't pull it out. And at 138, he repeats, don't pull it out. Now, apparently, throughout the entirety of his issuing commands to Philando Castile, Philando Castile refused to stop reaching for where the gun was in fact found. Another note that the media doesn't like to point out all that much. Uh, he was reaching for the place where the gun actually was when the officer shot him. And, uh, you know, when they pulled him out, oh, look, there is the gun that he said he wasn't reaching for. Uh, he could have been reaching for his ID. I mean, that was there too. But the officer is not in the position of having to read the guy's mind. And he's certainly not in the position of having to believe what it is that a non-compliant person is telling him he's not doing. I mean, if you have a rule like that, all it says to, uh, you know, some criminal who wants to kill a cop, uh, okay, Mr. Criminal, if you want to kill the cop, all you have to do is tell him that you're not reaching for your gun while you're actually continuing to move your hand towards where the firearm actually is, and he is thereby required to wait to see if you actually, in fact, pull it out and start shooting at him before he'll be justified at a, before he'll be justified in shooting at you. No. Uh, you have a person who has been stopped for some petty uh, offense, some trivial infraction of the law. A person who, upon contact, exhibits the behavior of a person who's on drugs. The smell of drugs is apparent. The guy, uh, you know, afterwards is found to have been high at the time by the toxicology, and who is not obeying your commands to not go for, to not reach for that weapon. He was, in fact, reaching for it. So at 138, uh, uh, sorry, 135, he says, "Don't reach for it." The guy, Philando Castile, continues reaching for where the gun was found. 136 to 137, don't pull it out. 138, don't pull it out. At 139, the officer pulls his firearm out. Uh, and at 139, 1 minute 39 seconds, his first shot is fired. And at 1 minute uh, 42 seconds into the video, his last shot is fired. So from the uh, time he pulls his firearm out to respond to what it is that he is seeing that the guy is doing, which is to, which is to say continuing to reach for where the firearm is, in fact, uh, located, uh, until he finishes his last shot is three seconds. Police shootings typically start and finish in, you know, under four, under five seconds, something like that. Uh, very many of them are over and under two seconds, you know, so 1,001, 1, and the whole incident is done. Now, in that space of time, from the, the time he issues his first command to not reach for the firearm until it's all over. It's seven seconds. This guy has to make a decision on the spot based on what he's seeing this person doing in response to his commands, which is not following them. Uh, he has this very short period of time to make a decision, which if he gets wrong, he's the one who uh, stands to be on the other end of the bullet uh, from the person who has violated the law, who is un un you know, unlawfully on drugs, uh, armed while high, not a great idea, and who is not obeying commands to stop reaching for his firearm. I don't know what people like Ben Shapiro want officers in this situation to do. Ben Shapiro seems not to appreciate, among others in the media, that uh, a fact that jurors do appreciate. The officer on the scene of the incident, when it happens, has an extremely short period of time to get the decision right or die. He does not have the benefit of dozens of lawyers and dozens of talking heads and pundits and pontificators who have all these debate committees and spend you know hundreds to thousands of man hours going, well, what if this or what if that or what if the other? You know, I can what if this till next Tuesday the same as anybody else. The officer doesn't have the luxury of hitting pause and, and saying, hmm, gee, uh, what would be the ideal outcome in this situation? He has to react. This officer was calm. The first command that he gave, don't reach for it, very calm. Don't pull it out, very calm. The third one, don't pull it out, while he's saying that, he's getting his gun out because the guy is not obeying his commands. I cannot sit here and say that in that situation, I would have reacted differently than this officer did. I might have. I don't know. I can't see precisely what he was doing. Um, I can only base it on the reactions and the fact that the person wasn't obeying his commands and other information that came in afterwards, coupled with what the officer said that he saw and uh, what he uh, claimed that he knew at the time, which was supported by the toxicology report that you know there was marijuana in the car. Uh, not just in the car, but in the guy's bloodstream. Now, when I was on the job and I got pulled over, which happened occasionally, uh, 
obviously just the man was trying to keep me down. It's not that I sped or anything. Oh, no, not that. Actually, I've never been pulled over for speeding. Oh, that's not true. I lied. Sorry. Anyway, uh, be, you know, because I was always armed, what I would say right out of the gate is uh, I'm lawfully armed. My fire, I would specify where my firearm or firearms uh, were located. You know, it's on my right hip, it's ankle, wherever it was. Um, and then I would, I would issue a subtle, not a, not a command, but a directive to the officer, you know, like a quasi-directive, I guess. Uh, tell me how you are most comfortable proceeding, and we'll do it that way. Because I don't want any misunderstanding. The first thing I would do is, is uh, clasp my hands so it's abundantly clear that I'm not presenting a threat in any particular way. I certainly would not say, I have a gun, and then start reaching for it. That's not what you do. Um, well, not if you're smart. But, again, people on drugs, not the most rational actors out there. Another thing that I did when I carried firearms, I didn't get drunk while I was armed. I certainly didn't do drugs while I was armed. And uh, when I've been pulled over, I certainly would not disobey the lawful commands of a police officer who's validly stopped me, or even if he's invalidly stopped me. The place to resolve those issues are in court if it gets to that level, not on the side of the road. On the side of the road, officers get a lot of leeway from juries uh, because they understand the time constraint of what they have to do. And once, when you're a police officer and you pull someone over, even if they're uh, lawfully armed and the perfect, you know, well, they're not the most perfectly law-abiding person because you pulled them over for something. <laughs> anyway, and they say, I have a firearm, I lawfully have a firearm, that gets your attention. It doesn't mean you jump and you go, oh, freeze, mother bitch, or anything like that, which this officer did not do, but it does get your attention, it heightens your senses, and, uh, you know, all right, well, that's cool, we'll play, play cool, and as long as the person's cooperative, uh, there's no reason for the officers uh, to react negatively, and they don't, typically. You see these cases, and like the one at issue here, when the person refuses to obey lawful commands. So I think that the shoot was, was a good one, which is to say that it was a justifiable homicide. Uh, the, the officer should not suffer any criminal uh, liability for engaging in that particular conduct, given what uh, Philando Castile uh, was doing and was refusing to do. So... Um, you can Monday morning quarterback. After the battle, everybody's a general. Uh, as easy as anybody else, all you want when you're not under oath to do things in a particular way and to evaluate the evidence objectively, which is what juries do. They evaluate the evidence as objectively as they can, jettisoning their biases, following the law as it's given to them by the judge, and constraining their analysis to the evidence presented in the trial. None of these constraints operate on the lawyers that get on these shows. They don't operate on the journalists in these programs. And that's precisely why these people can come to the, all their different conclusions. And these conclusions rarely match that of a jury. And that is precisely to be expected. Uh, people who are, who are not constrained by the law to do something in a particular way and do it honestly and objectively are free to pretty much make up whatever conclusions they want and then spin all the evidence in any particular way that is, uh, it's, that is friendly to their preordained conclusion that policeman bad, dead man good. All right, have a great day.